Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. We want to have God's best in our life, then we've got to be willing to give God our best, and that means give Him our all. You know, to be honest, if I'm going about my day and all of a sudden I'm starting to do something that I've forgotten I shouldn't do, and the Holy Spirit quickly reminds me that's, mm, that attitude's not good. You know, I don't have to go, oh boy, here I go again. Something wrong with me. Every time I turn around, it's always me, you know. <laughs> and that's the way I was when I was more of a, of a baby, more carnal Christian. Not that I don't still have a long way to go, but... You know, now I would see that like, oh man, God, thank you that you're, that you're paying that much attention to me that you can, that you recognize every time I'm even about to have a bad attitude and you take your time from running the world. <laughs> I mean, isn't that amazing? That God takes his time from running the world just to say to you, you got a bad attitude that's going to get you in trouble. Come on, sweetie, let's change it before you get in trouble. To me, that's awesome. It's like, wow, God cares that much about me. And surely I can then submit to that and have a good attitude and say, thank you, God, that you care enough about me to remind me before I get in trouble that I'm about to get in trouble. And this is our whole relationship with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended on high, he sent the Holy Spirit to represent him and take his place, and he said, I will never leave you. I will, I've been with you, no, I will come to live in you, and I will be there to help you in every single thing in your life, but you gotta listen to me. You need to listen to me. And it really just gets to be, just gets to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Somebody's not sure yet. Okay, well, we'll get there. <laughs> Revelation 3.19. See, we get too defensive when God shows us things about ourselves. It's like, oh, another thing wrong with me. Can't do anything right. Well, what about them? You don't, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I, I remember well God dealing with me about so many, many, many things that I got so tired of it. I just thought, my God, can any human being have this much wrong with them? Anybody know what I mean? It's like, can anybody have... I mean, I don't care what the message was, I needed it. It was like... I mean, I couldn't turn to a scripture that I didn't need. It was like, I needed it all. And... And, and I remember one time I was so tired of God dealing with me about stuff. And I remember going to Dave because I'm thinking, well, Dave's got problems. <laughs> I mean, he's got problems that I, you know, I don't ever hear him saying anything about God's dealing with me. And so I asked him, I said, is God dealing with you about anything? And he said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and oh, I got so upset with God. It's like, what is with this? But you know what I heard in my spirit? You've asked me for a lot, Joyce. Do you want it or not? Come on, what are you asking God to do in your life? Have you asked God to let you do great things? Well, then there's going to have to be great change and great submission, a willingness to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. If we want to have God's best in our life, then we've got to be willing to give God our best, and that means give him our all. Amen? I'm really just, for the sake of people, I'm just tired of all the compromise. We can't live with one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Well, one of the prophets said, how long are you going to 
halt and limp between two opinions. If God is God, then serve him. And if Baal's God, then serve him. So if God's got our answers, then let's get fully on board. And if the world's got our answers, then go ahead and go with the world. But I've already tried that and I've decided that God is, God is the way to go. Amen. I kind of like the reputation that I've got. You know, <laughs> some people think I'm the crazy lady on TV. And, uh, <laughs> but I get some interesting things when I'm out. People say, oh, you're, you're that Bible lady, aren't you? <laughs> and I mean, secretly, I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm the, I want to base my life on the Word of God. I'm proud of taking a stand for God. Amen? <laughs> you think I don't know when I'm out in public that people don't? You know what? We need to make the name of Jesus famous. Yeah. Amen? That's the Jesus lady. You need to be the Jesus person at work. Amen? And I'm sure many of you are. We've got a lot of wonderful people in the body of Christ that are doing some amazing, amazing things. Revelation 3.19. Those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I tell their faults. I convict and convince and reprove I chasten, I discipline, I instruct them. So be enthusiastic and in earnest and burning with zeal. <laughs> Look, I'm only telling you what's wrong with you because I love you. <laughs> so get excited about it. And then repent, change your mind. <laughs> Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Wow. You know, let's just don't pray that prayer out of some kind of habitual, you know, the Lord's Prayer just, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, kingdom come, your will be done in earth. You know, just. We, need to, we need to think about what we're saying. Matthew 26, 39 says, and going a little further, he threw himself upon the ground on his face and prayed. You know, when Jesus threw himself on the ground on his face and prayed, he was praying out of great agony of soul. He was making a decision that was gut-wrenchingly hard to make. If it's possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not what I want, but your will be done. Okay, so let me just go for it for a minute. You know what? You don't get to leave a marriage just because you want to. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, somebody needs to say it. We need to get back on track, you know? It's like, hey, right. man, how about if, what if God took the attitude with us that we take with people? Uh, you guys, I'm, I'm giving this three months. <laughs> and if you're still this way in three months, I'm out of here. And like I said, hey, listen, I was divorced when I was like 21. So I, I mean, I get it. I mean, I married the first guy that came along and he was nuttier than I was and he ran around with other women and you know, I mean, there are times when he ended up in jail. So, I mean, there are times when you can't stick something out. But, I mean, there are lots of other times when people just want to throw the towel in on whatever. You know what? We don't get to just give up on things because we have one little uncomfortable moment. And it's not just marriage. It's all kinds of things. We even give up on friends too quick if they're not making us feel the way that we want to feel all the time. All right, I can, I can tell you've had about all that you want, so we'll. <laughs> Your will be done, God. Your will be done and not mine. Now, the wounded soul. Making some analogy now about sheep because Jesus is our shepherd and we are the sheep. And I said last night, in case you weren't here, that there are a few sheep facts <laughs> that it helps us to know. They're very fearful, timid, 
The definition in the sheep book says stupid <laughs> and stubborn. A jackrabbit can stampede an entire herd of sheep. <laughs> no wonder he calls us sheep. And so that analogy is made in the Bible because sheep need endless, constant care. They will not do the right thing if they don't have a shepherd who keeps them on the right track. That's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with us always, and it's why the Bible says that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for us. He never stops praying for us because we never stop needing it. Amen? Now, a wounded soul is sometimes down. We call it depressed or discouraged. The Bible calls it cast down. And in Psalm 42, David said, why, why are you cast down, O my soul? Put your hope in God. And then a second time in verse 6, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Put your hope in God. Now, this is a shepherd's phrase, and I love this. This is a shepherd's phrase for a sheep who has gotten on its back and cannot get up without help. The way sheep are designed and made, once they get over on their back, it's very difficult, if not almost sometimes impossible, for them to get up without help. The shepherd, the good shepherd, daily looks over the flock, counts the sheep to see if any are missing. He checks to see if any are cast down somewhere, and then he goes and sets them right, otherwise they will die. Now, it's interesting to me to think about Jesus, our shepherd, constantly looking over the flock. Is any missing? Oh, there's one on their back. Better go help them. <laughs> and you know, sometimes he doesn't just, well, he, it's always him doing it, but God usually works through people. So if one is on their back, he may find two more that are always on their feet and he'll guide them over to help the one that's on their back. You know what, thankfully I'm on my feet today. And some of you, although you walked in, you really came in on your back. And we're here to help you get set right again, but it's not just so you can walk out and have a nice trip in the pasture. Now your job is to go look for others that are cast down so you can help others be set right. You know, God doesn't use these analogies just for something to do. He calls Jesus our good shepherd because there's lessons we can learn from studying a shepherd's relationship to his sheep. He calls us sheep because there's lessons we can learn from studying the nature of sheep. Why don't you just take a little bit of time? I mean, you can, you can look it up. You can find anything you want now on an Insta online. Just, just look up the nature of sheep and see what you get. You'll recognize yourself pretty quick. <laughs> I, I recognize myself. All right. Some sheep are known to be cast down more than others, and only the diligence of the shepherd helps them survive. When a sheep is cast down, predators move in. For the sheep, it's buzzards, vultures, dogs, coyotes, and cougars. For us, it's the devil. He moves in because a sheep that is cast down, depressed, discouraged, downtrodden, sad, lost their joy, is easy prey for the enemy. The devil does everything he can to keep us sad and mad, but God wants us glad. Because really and truly, our joy is found in strength. We had our yearly women's conference a couple weeks ago in St. Louis, and a girl came that I'm aware of whose brother had just suddenly died, and it was just a really sad time for her. We know the, we know the family, and I, I was quite impressed that she decided to come. You know, a lot of times when we're hurting, we just want to go hide away somewhere and just hurt, and, you know, maybe that's the way you need to handle it sometimes, but she decided to go ahead and come. So I talked to her dad the other day, and I said, well, how did you know, how's she doing now? And he said, you know, she's doing really good. She said that she laughed at that conference more than she had in a whole year. 
Okay, so now here she was. She had this terrible loss in her life. She came to the house of God. She not only heard the word, but she laughed harder than she had in a year, and it brought restoration to her life. Let me tell you something. We need to take every opportunity that we can to giggle, to laugh, to smile. Let's stop being a sourpuss about everything that's going on in our lives that we don't like and find reasons to laugh. You know what? I'm getting older and I have already prayed that I will be the funniest old person that anybody has ever seen in their life. I mean, I am not gonna be a cranky old lady who sits around, I mean, I've got my mind set ahead of time. My kids are gonna love me. They are gonna love being around me. Dave is gonna love being around me. I am just gonna be so funny. And let me tell you, last week when I accidentally brushed my teeth with A&D ointment, they thought I was funny. I mean, I'm getting comical. I do some stuff. I mean, it's like, my kids are like, mother, could you wait till we park the car to get out of it? <laughs> you know, I'll leave this conference today and I'll start thinking about the next one in Tampa. I'm, you know, I'm always like. <laughs> There's nothing better than having, having joy. You know, well, I'm just so down. I'm just so discouraged. Well, go find something to laugh about. Follow me around for a year. Jesus has special concern for those that are cast down in life. And he always helps them stand up again. So listen, if you've had a lot of problems and you're down today and you're discouraged or you're watching by television and you feel down and discouraged, you've had a year of depression, you've had a lot of loss in your life, let me tell you something. Jesus has got his eye on you. He is very concerned about you. And he's even trying to talk to you right now through me to say, I care about you. Let me set you upright again. Let me get you back in the program of life. You don't have to stay on your back forever. I love Acts 10, 38. See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and in particular curing all that were oppressed of the devil. So I see Jesus just every day, he just went about looking for people that needed a lift in life. I wonder what would happen if more Christians would make that their ministry. Well, I just wish God would show me what my ministry is. Well, until he does, let's just give you the ministry of encouragement. Or how about what it says in the psalm, serve the Lord with gladness. How about if we give you the ministry of gladness and you just serve the Lord being glad and making other people glad. There's no excuse for us to sit around bored and miserable when there's too many other people that are more bored and miserable than we are that we could pour into their life and help make them better. Let me tell you something, the longer I preach today, the happier I get. I mean, seriously, when you wake up in the morning and you don't feel so good, don't just sit around and talk about how bad you feel all day. Get up, go somewhere, find something to do that's worth doing, and you'll be surprised you'll start feeling better. You think I feel good all the time when I wake up in these hotels? No. Let me tell you, it does not look like this when I get it out of bed. Now, when we're weak, instead of rebuke and rejection, the shepherd gives special care to the weaker sheep in the flock. Wow. 2 Corinthians 11, 29. Paul says, who is weak? And I do not feel his weakness. Who is made to stumble and fall and have his faith hurt? And I am not on fire with sorrow or indignation. So Paul said, listen, there's not one of you that's weak that I don't feel your weakness. He wasn't judging and criticizing them. He said, I feel your weakness. Well, I think that we have to look at some of the things that Paul went through to look at what brought him to that place that he could feel the way he did about other people's weaknesses instead of judging them and criticizing them. Because sometimes we look at people and think, well, you know, you've been in church 20 years. You ought to know better than to act like that. Well, yeah, maybe, but you know, what's your problem? 
you know. <laughs> Come on. You know, we're always quick to judge people that have a problem in an area where we have a strength. Good preaching, Joyce. Thank you. And why are the kind of things that I'm saying so important? Because God commands us to love one another. One new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this love shall all men out there that are lost and going to hell know that you are my disciples. So let's take a look at some of the stuff that Paul went through. Let's back up to verse 24, 2 Corinthians 11, 24. Five times I received from the hand of the Jews 40 lashes all but one. <laughs> Three times I've been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I've been aboard a ship wrecked at sea. A whole night and a day I've spent adrift on the deep. Many times on journeys exposed to perils from rivers, perils from bandits, perils from my own uh, nation, perils from the Gentiles, perils in the city, perils in the desert places, perils in the sea, perils from those posing as believers but destitute of Christian knowledge and piety. In toil and hardship, watching often through sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, frequently driven, driven to fasting by one, in cold and exposure and lack of clothing. And besides all those things, there are with, without, there are the daily inescapable pressures of my care and anxiety for all the churches. Verse 29, who is weak and I don't feel his weakness? <laughs> You know what? I don't know. I don't know that we can have real compassion on people that are hurting and going through things if we've never been through anything ourselves. You know, Paul probably had a strong case of pride in the beginning. Paul was a very religious man, a Pharisee of Pharisees, uh, highly educated, just, he had it all. He said, if anybody had anything, I had more. I, I had everything. And when that's the case, you usually get pretty full of yourself. Now, I don't know there's a lot of things about Paul's life that were not told. I mean, it says that he was called into ministry after he was confronted by God on the Damascus Road, and he went into ministry, but you don't hear very much about him for about 13 years before he presented himself to the apostles. Now, he was doing things, but it's interesting that we go through hidden years with God before we begin our public years with God. Joseph had hidden years with God. Moses had hidden years with God. And I can guarantee you that I had many hidden years with God. And it's in those years when you're going through things that you don't understand and things aren't happening for you and you're, you're trying to hang on to your faith in God and you're being judged and criticized by your friends and just all the different things that we go through that God uses those things to do a work in your heart so when he finally does put you in a position to maybe be over some people or do something with people, you have a proper attitude of understanding where people are coming from. Let me tell you something. If, if you like maybe are a smoker and you want to quit and it's been really, really hard for you, I've got compassion because I had a hard time with that. If you struggle with, with your weight, I understand that because I was a chubby teenager and I struggled with that. I mean, I've been on a million diets in my life before I finally got victory. But when you talk to somebody who, I mean, let's just say that you struggle with your weight and you talk to somebody that's got a real fast metabolism and they can eat anything they want and never gain an ounce, they don't get you. There's no way they get you. They're just like, well, just don't eat so much. I mean, I, you know, I went through a period where I thought my metabolism's not slow, man, it's in a coma. It's like, <laughs> mine died, I think, and needs a resurrection. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I, I, I've, got, I've got victory now, and I've got, you know, I know what I can do and what I can't do, and God gives me the grace to do it, but I went through a lot to get here. And so, when you're going through things, 
Don't always get so upset that God's not delivering you right away because you may just be getting some experience and some education for some of the things that God's going to use you for later on in life. Amen? If you tell me you were sexually abused in your childhood, I get you. I feel your pain. You don't got to explain it to me. I know what you're talking about. God has given us free will, and free will is a great gift, but it's also a great responsibility. We have the ability to choose life or death. We always want to make sure that we choose life. When I first came to this place, this was a deserted uh, place with huge trees, rocks. It was like a den for most of the people. India is a heel arm land. In veel gebieden is er geen toegang tot drinkwater. Veel van deze plaatsen zijn onbewoond. When we dug the borewell, uh, then people got the news. They knew that. Uh, there is no water available in the area. That's how people started coming and started living in this area. Al meer dan 30 jaar zijn wij van Hand of Hope, het christelijk zendingwerk van Joyce Meyer Ministries, actief in India. Tot op heden hebben we honderden waterbronnen en kerken mogen bouwen. There are many wells in this village, about three or four, but each well is dedicated to one community or one caste or one religion. One other religion is not allowed to go there to fetch the water. But we drilled a well outside the compound of the church. So it is open for 24 hours. People can get water anytime they want. There were about 30 to 40 people attending the Sunday worship service prior to having digging the bore well. We have now around a over 500 people attending the Sunday worship service. Yeah, so we plant a seed, we get an opportunity to come align ourselves with the pastor. He gets to build a community of faith, find new leaders and go plant other churches, which is really the great story. And as our partners uh, and their faithful giving, uh, we can see that, which is really the great story, isn't it? It is such a privilege to be with you on this day. And on behalf of Joyce Meyer Ministry and Hand of Hope, we are pleased to present this water well. And we pray that this well will be a benefit to everybody around. And let this be a testament to God's love. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joy-maier.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.